worship with us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hey, 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 hey. right here. And yeah, we need your voices on this one. So clean your throat. Come on, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all gonna help us out? Yeah. So I need y'all to do this. Ready?
then that settles it. If his word is true, and it is true, then what do we have to worry about? We love you, oh God.
There's a river flowing. His power is flowing. So don't miss it. Because the thing about the current, once it goes, it doesn't come back.
released in heaven right now. Father, so right now, right here in this church, we release hope over families, Father. Hope that draws them together. Hope, Father, that helps them celebrate each other to work out their differences, Father. We release peace in those families, Father, that are going through turmoil in their lives right now with their children, with their spouses, Father. There is nothing impossible for you to do. Your son, Jesus Christ, taught us to pray, Father. Bring your kingdom into the families of this church because we know a church with happy families is a strong church. And not only in this church, but in this city. But not only in this city, but in the state. Not only in the state, but in the country and throughout the whole wide world, Father. We release peace. We release hope. We release strength, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray healing over families that have critically ill members, Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray for those children that are backslidden, Lord. Bring them back, hallelujah. Bring them back into your fold, Father. Every family member, Father, that has slid away from you, bring them back with your love, Father. Bring them back with your hope, Father. Bring them back with your strength, Father. And Lord, we pray these things in the powerful, wonderful, marvelous, rescuing, restoring name Slow down. Jesus.
on church, tonight one of the last prayers we want to pray, it's over this nation. We don't want to only pray for this nation, but we want to pray for other nations as well. That God's perfect will be done. I know there's a lot happening in the world, but there's only one God. And the Bible reminds us that the king's hand is in the heart of God, and he can turn it whichever way he prefers. So tonight, let's pray. God, I thank you for this great nation, the United States of America. And God, tonight, I pray for our president, that you would give him wisdom to direct our country. God, I pray for the Senate, that you would give them wisdom when making decisions. God, I pray for our Congress, God. I pray for our Supreme Court, that as they make bylaws and policies, that you will be able to speak to them. God, we ask that you speak to their minds, and you speak to their hearts, that they don't only make decisions out of selfishness and decisions out of political matters, but God, they make decisions that's from your heart. Tonight, we pray, God, for our nation. God, we pray that the decisions that are made in this country will be decisions from your throne that we will hear from you like never before. God, I don't only pray for this nation, but I pray for Ukraine and the war that's happening in Ukraine. God, I pray right now that you put a hedge of protection over the people of Ukraine. God, I pray that you speak to the Russian leaders and you speak to their minds and you speak to their hearts. We know that you can do more than we can. God, we call on you tonight because we know that it's not over for the United States of America, but there's still a people that hears from your throne. There's still a people that hears from heaven. If my people, which were called by your name, would humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, and seek your face, then we'll hear from heaven, and you will heal our land. Tonight, God, we ask you to heal our land. Would you heal our country? Would you heal our city? Would you heal our state? Until we'll know that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lord has breathed on us. God, I thank you that we live in a nation where we can sing your praises freely. I thank you that we live in a nation where we can open up our Bibles and read your word. Thank you for the freedom that you give. We don't take it for granted. We don't take it for happenstance. But we know it's you that give us breath. And with every breath that's in our law, we'll lift our voices. We'll sing praises to you. Come on with our walls in house. And with our walls online for 30 seconds.
Someone say, I love you, Jesus. Come on. to say pertaining to earth. God, we know that you're always speaking, so would you speak to our situation? Would you speak to what we're dealing with? Would you speak to we know we've heard from heaven like never before? In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Hey, without walls online, without walls in the house, can we give God praise one more time? Y'all look so good this tonight. Hey, do me a favor. On your way down to your seats, can you turn to somebody and say, welcome home. Welcome home, welcome home. We got tonight, we got Simone and Gilly. Well guys, I, I'm so excited about what's happening in the life of our church. Let me say this, if this is your first time worshiping with us, welcome home. I, I would love to do this. If you can text any, uh, you can text uh WWIC to 55498. You can text WWIC to 55498. If this is your first time worshiping with us, do me a favor. We want to give you a free gift. If you can slip your hands up in the air and wave it like you just took care, let me know if this is your first time worshiping with us. I see one hand right here, one hand. A first time worshiping up front, one hand right here. I see another hand over there. Hey, without walls, help us welcome all of our online first time guests as well as in the house for the first time. Let them know that we love you. We're not going to stop you, but we love you. So here's what we need to do. We're putting something in your hands. If you're watching online, you can DM us. We're putting something in your hands. If you can fill that out, hold on to that. And if you can fill that out on your way out into the lobby, there should be a table on your left-hand side. You can turn that in for a free gift. We just want to give you a million dollars and tell you welcome home. Uh, we're so excited that you joined us tonight. Hey, I have Simone and Ileana tonight. Would y'all have welcomed them to the platform as they come for highlights? Good evening, Without Walls. Good evening. Wow, you guys are loud and awake today. I love it. I wasn't expecting charged up. <laughs> oh, man. Well, this Sunday is Mother's Day. So all you mothers, please come on out. Bring your mom out. We would love to celebrate Mother's Day with all of you here Without Walls at 9 and 11. We also have growth track. If you are a new member or if you've already been going here for a long period of time, um, you can actually still come to growth track and you can learn about our mission, our vision, and our values of this church. So instead of it, well, normally it's every first and second Sunday of the month, but since it's Mother's Day this coming Sunday, we're gonna do it the following Sunday, which is May 15th, all right? That's directly after the 11 a.m. service. In speaking of May 15th. Yes, 
So also on that day, we will be doing baptism. Yes. Yes. So here without walls, we believe that this is an outward expression of an inward confession. So hey, if you want to go public with your faith, this is the perfect time for you to do it. Sign on up, and we can do it after the 11 a.m. worship experience. All right, and we've been talking about summer camp, so that's coming up very soon. We actually have an open house coming up on May 31st, I believe, or May 13th, I'm sorry. May 13th and May 27th, our open house. And then we also will start summer camp May 31st, all the way through August 5th. So you can drop your kids off here, um, and they can actually have breakfast, they'll have lunch and a snack, and they're also gonna be learning um, so, and it's a Christian environment as well. So you know that they're safe with people that love God and believe in the same God you do. So um, I believe you can actually drop them off until 6 p.m. So it'll be $35 a week, right? <laughs> so $35 a week is actually an awesome deal. So uh, just bring your kids. If you um, have any place where you don't have a place for them to go, you can bring them right here. So then in June, all my ladies, I need you to clear your calendar because June 24th through the 26th, we will be having our Women's Conference flourishing. Yes, flourishing. So we're going to have Regina Martin here, Real Talk Kim, and Christina Gard. Tickets are currently on sale, so right after this worship experience, you can go purchase your tickets, buy one for me, buy one for you, and Simone. Thank you. <laughs> Now, I know that's a lot of information, so we really just want you to be able to go on one app, which is called the Church Center app. Church you can Center. find it on the App Store and the uh, Play Store, yeah, um, and if you have an Android. Yeah. So you can download that, and as soon as you open it up, you'll see Without Walls. You can click on it, and it'll have all the information. It'll actually be a calendar there for you, so you don't have to remember all the dates. Yeah. All right, sounds all right. good. So, without walls, can you please stand on your feet so we can welcome our lead pastor, Brown. Come on, let's give Indiana a grita, a hand clap, and Miss Simone. Come on, let's give Jesus a hand clap. A good Thursday night. Come on, let's give Jesus a hand clap. Hey, y'all get back up here. Get back up here. Get up here. Get up here. I always wanted to do that. Let's give our praise. Y'all get up here. Hey, guys, guess who, guess who else is coming to Flourishing Women's Conference? We got John and Aventure Gray is coming to the Women's Conference. Eee! So she will be here. Aventure will be here on Saturday night. Okay, that's worth the ticket. Come on. Come on, come on. And I, I may have a secret for y'all on Thursday. I'm waiting on him to confirm, but it's going to be major. Major. Somebody shout major. All right, all right. So y'all want to do this. I want to hear you give me joy down deep in my soul. Hey. I want to hear that. Y'all turn up. Let's turn up for Jesus. It's Cinco de Mayo meets. Friday, amen. Throw some horns in there. Yeah, I know it, right? So. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. We need all this energy when the song starts, amen. Hey. 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 Down deep. Hey.
worker. He's a promise keeper. He's a midnight rider. He's a four-day traveler. I tried him, and I know he's all right. Anybody love that Jesus that I'm talking about? Come on, if you're in the level, put your hands in the air and say, God, I love you. Lord, 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 I love you. He's sweet, I know. He's sweet, I know. Storm clouds may rise. Strong winds may blow. But I'll tell the world, wherever that I go, that I found the Savior. Y'all ain't old enough to know these kind of songs. Hallelujah. Y'all sit out in the presence of the Lord. You know the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run therein and are safe. Can we thank God tonight for you being in the house of God? Amen. And more importantly, the presence of the Lord being present in our house. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to talk about prayer. I want to talk about prayer. Would that be appropriate tonight to talk about prayer? Amen. Go with me to the book of Colossians chapter number four. Colossians four. I feel real preaching, but I'm going to um, not preach tonight. Y'all come back Sunday to hear the, the conclusion of the whole message. Amen. Hey, y'all, guess what? Jesus is not in the grave. <laughs> Early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. Hallelujah. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fears are gone. Amen. Because we know who holds our future. Life is worth the living just because. Amen. Amen. Colossians number four. I want to um, read verse number two, and I think we'll go from there. Y'all give me a good 10 church minutes, maybe 15 church minutes, um, and I'll be done as soon as I finish. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Colossians four, Colossians four and two. It says in these wise, it says, continue in prayer. And watch in the same with thanksgiving. Can I read that again? Continue in prayer while you're praying. Open your eyes and watch in the same with thanksgiving. I want to talk tonight the prayer life of a Christian. The prayer life of a Christian. You know, um, we've made church very unique because we've imputed personalities and it's overshadowed, it's overshadowed principle. Um, we've, 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 we've created a right way and a wrong way to do a principle thing. I can tell you this, you don't have to get on your knees you don't have to lay out with white sheets all over you to have had prayer meetings. You don't even have to be a symbol in a room to have prayer meetings. You, you, be, be honest with you, you don't even have to be in church. I'm finna mess up. To have prayer meetings. Prayer is simple communication with our God. Yeah. Now, if the only time y'all speak to me is when you're in church, my question is going to be, do you really yeah. know me? Yeah. Um, there, there's so many people in this room that think you know each other because you come to church together. There's people at 9 o'clock don't know 11 o'clock because y'all don't go to the same service, although you're in the same church. And can I tell you this? There are some people in this room that think because you speak to Jesus on Sunday morning that you have a relationship with him. No, real relationship. The Bible says we ought to continue in prayer. That means when I wake up, I wake up myself praying. Anybody in here ever woke your own self up praying? You ever woke up and before you turned on Twitter or Snapchat or see what happened while you were sleeping on Facebook, when you open up your eyes, you say, God, it's another new day and I'm not gone. Come on, I'm going to 
wish I had some real believers in here that can say my prayer life does not start when I get to 14, 41, 14, but my prayer life is a continual thing. When I wake up, I'm praying. When I go to sleep, I'm praying. When I'm happy, I'm praying. When I'm sad, I'm praying. I will pray at all times because it's my lifeline. Somebody shout my lifeline. So point number one, we have to pray with persistence. Paul said, devote yourself to prayer. Continue earnestly. That's what New King James says it this way. Continue earnestly in prayer. In the original language, it says continue steadfastly in prayer. That word means continue steadfastly. In one word, it simply says be persistent, persist in it. You guys ever have one of those children that keep aggravating you until you just tell them, yeah? You ever had that one staff member that keeps asking for apple pro? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Virginia. <laughs> I'm sorry. You, you, you ever have that one person that keeps being persistent? Can, can I tell you, there's some of y'all sitting next to husbands and wives the only reason they got you were because they were. Let me tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all something. Leo, Leo, you just you gave up. You, you got God. You just gave up. You gave up. So so you you got to be persistent. I mean, let me tell y'all something. When God tells you something, and you get a yes in your belly, you gotta keep being persistent in prayer. I don't care if the devil tells you no. If God told you yeah, you got to stay persistent. I, I need some people to stop giving up as soon as it don't look like your prayer is coming through. But I need some real no-limit soldiers in here that can say, I don't care what it looks like. I have a persistent in me. I'm going to keep on praying. That Pray on my child. Pray through, pray through, pray through, pray through. You got to be persistent. Persistent. Luke 18, 1 says, now he was telling them a parable to show them that at all times I ought to pray and not to lose heart. Let me tell you how this works. The enemy will send things your way to make it seem as if your prayer is not working. Can I tell you this? Let me tell you all a secret. Let me tell you a secret. The way you know that your prayer is working is things get worse. <laughs> they get worse. That, that's how you know, uh-oh, I've not entered into a level where the enemy is now fighting me. And in order for the enemy to fight you, it had to go to a level where the Prince of Persia was. Come here, Daniel. We heard you on the first day, but there was something happening in the earth realm that was above your head that you could not see. But what I want you to do is keep on praying. Woo! I need somebody in here to get encouraged and say, I don't care if God told me my husband's going to be saved. I don't care if he's selling dope, smoking dope, using dope, cutting dope, building dope. If God made us a promise, he's a promise keeper. I need about 93 people in this room that know God is a promise keeper. That would say, I don't care how hard it gets. I'm going to pray on, I'm going to pray on, I'm going to pray on, I'm going to pray on. So, don't lose heart. King James says, do not faint. Luke 1, Luke 11, 9 says it this way. It's where we find the promises. He says, ask. And it may be given. And it may be given. Um, um, we, we had to make some purchases today at Good Talk Center. And we got protocol around here, right? Because we won't just spend y'all money. So, Mark Payne, he asked the first time. Miss Virginia said, well, we got to get a second approval before you start seeking Mark said, here's what I'm going to do. Y'all figure the approval part out. I, I know what I need. And I'm going to go get what I need. And sometimes you got to do pain. You got to say, you know what? Y'all figure out how it's going to work out. I'm going to go get what I, oh my God. I need somebody in here that can just raise your faith with me for just a few minutes. Stop 
trying to figure out how you're going to work it out. You just need to go ahead and do it because if you ask, shall be given unto you. Seek. That means after I pray, now I need to go look for it. Stop asking God for a house and you ain't even went house hunting. Stop asking God for a car and you ain't even pull up in your new Bugatti. Y'all ain't, somebody shout, I don't just want to ask for it. I'm going to look for my stuff. I want somebody to start looking around. Start looking down, looking up, looking around. Say, I'm trying to find what God has for me. Somebody said, boy, you ain't got no money. What you doing over here? I'm seeking. You got bad credit. Why are you at the car dealership? I'm, oh, my God. You don't have money to live in this neighborhood. You can't live in Abalah right next to the nation. Baby, you don't know the kind of God that I'm served. I know you think I need a cosigner, but I got a better cosigner than y'all can ever think about. He got so much money, he don't count his cows. He count his heels. His name is Jehovah Jireh. And he just so happened to be my daddy. Seek. Hey, 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 look, look, look. Knock! Can I tell y'all about a real knocker? Some of y'all be getting, getting like a Jehovah Witness anointing. At 8 o'clock in the morning, Saturday, Jehovah Witness anointing. Because they're going to keep knocking until you answer the door. I need somebody in here to act like your mama on that very day that you did not want her to come to your house. I want you to just keep knocking. Keep knocking. Somebody shout, keep knocking. Keep knocking like they owe you something. Keep knocking like you know that door belongs to you. Come on. Somebody say, how do I knock? I knock in prayer. He says, not only do I knock in prayer, but I knock in thanksgiving. That means I give God thanks before it happens. That means I give him praise before I move into it. That means I give him a grace before I get into the place. Can I tell y'all this? You know how we say grace before we eat? That's a knock right there. That's saying, God, before I partake, I want to tell you thank you first. Do we have anybody in here that knows how to give God a thank you before you get it? Will y'all do me a favor? Will y'all shout like we're already in the new church? Would y'all give God a praise like we've already paid it off? Would you give God a praise like it's already done? And for this, we give you praise. Y'all sit down. I got to hurry up. Number two, we got to pray with passion. It's, you're going to be persistent in something. It stands to reason that you may be passionate about it. Paul says this, that you should be vigilant. That word vigilant means to be watchful. It's the opposite of slowfulness. I have an issue with lazy prayer warriors. Okay, I'm just going to talk about y'all. I'm sorry. I get here some mornings at 6 a.m., and it's like Mario Kelly gotta go get not not regular coffee. He gotta go get, they gotta go get them Cuban coffees. <laughs> them, you know them little shots. No leche, just cafe. Cause people just dragging here, looking like oh maybe Jesus will do it. <laughs> you know the Bible says since the days of John the Baptist. The kingdom of God is suffered violent. And you got to use that same violent to take it back by force. The reason the devil is not afraid of you is because you're too slowful in your prayer. You're not passionate about what you're doing. But when you really are a true prayer warrior, come on. When you're really a true believer, you get as passionate about your victory, as passionate about your breakthrough, as passionate about your healing. I need some John Q's in here that can say, I'm not going to leave this thing alone because I have a passion. You see passion all over the Bible. In Luke 3, number 1, at his baptism, the Bible said he was so passionate that heaven opened. Passionate prayer opens heaven. 
Luke 6 and 12, before he called his disciples, the Bible said he spent the whole night in prayer. Passionate prayer gives you direction. Luke 9, 29, his transfiguration. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face became different and his clothing became white and gleaming. Passionate prayer enables us to experience the glory of the Father. In John 17, his high priestly prayer, passionate prayer impacts the lives of others. In Matthew 26, 39, in the Garden of Gethsemane, it's only through passionate prayer that we can pour out our hearts to God. Yeah. Let me tell you something. You have not prayed until you start crying. I'm telling you, sometimes I want to pronounce right now that as we pray tonight, our hearts will become tender towards him. Yeah. Somebody shout, make me cry, God. Make me cry. In Luke 23, 24, as he hung on the cross, a life that is saved in passionate prayer would enable us to maintain that spirit even in the most difficult of circumstances. Somebody shout, pray with passion. Pray with passion. Number three, let me hurry up. Pray with thankfulness. Paul never fails to talk about how we ought to be thankful. Matthew 5.20 tells us that thanksgiving is a natural result of being filled with and walking under the influence of the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us this way. He says, in all things, give thanks. Can y'all do me a favor without loss? Don't thank God for now. Thank God for then. Can, can y'all take 30 seconds and thank God? Watch this, watch this. Not for what's going good in your life. Can y'all thank God for what's annoying you right now? Can you thank God for what's keeping you up? Come on. Can you thank God for what has you on your knees in prayer? Can you thank God for what's going wrong? Can you tell God, God, I have so much trust in you that I'm going to praise you even in the bad things. Come on. I need some mature believers in here. If I can get 49 people, I'll make number 50. That would lift your hands and say, God, my prayer and my praise may not necessarily look like my situation, but I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof. And be glad, all magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together, for the Lord is good, and his mercy endures. Can we go down to verse number 19? For many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver us out of them all. Come on, bless the Lord in this room. Come on, bless the Lord in this room. Open up your mouth and give God a praise. In spite of. When we express gratitude, it articulates our dependence on God. It demonstrates our relationship with God. It communicates gratitude. It's a proper attitude to get what you want. And it also brings us to a place of humility. And I want to talk about one more prayer. The prayer of intercession. Yeah. Intercessory prayer is basically praying for others. It is praying for God's will to be done in the lives of other people. It's that simple. You stand in the gap for other people. The Bible says in Isaiah 53 that he who knew no sin bore the sins of many and interceded for the transgressors. Luke 22 and 23 says, I have prayed for you, Peter, that your faith may not fail. Luke 23, 34 on the cross, Jesus praying for others. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. John 14, 15, Jesus intercedes for us, asking the Father to send the Holy Spirit. John 19, John 17 and 19, he prayed for us to church, us the body, the ecclesia, in the high priestly prayer. He says it this way. He said, ask on their behalf. I do not ask on the behalf of the world, but on those who that I have given you. God is saying, listen, when you're in my kingdom, you have a chief intercessor. And his name is Jesus Christ. The Bible says he sits at the right hand of the Father and he maketh intercession for us. 
And that intercession connects with our heart. And it's in the book of Romans where the Bible said there's earning and groanings that we cannot comprehend. That is when intercessor, when intercession meets the intercessor. True intercession does not take place until the intercessor meets intercession. And that means until prayers leave earth. Oh my God. Nothing happens in the spirit realm. You got to know how to intercede. Watch this. Watch this. The will of the Father. See why some of y'all intercessory prayer is not working? Because you're trying to do it your way. You're trying to get God to be a burger king when he's not a burger king. You do not have it your way. Real intercessory prayer says, God, whatever your will is, I want my will to match your, come on. We're not trying to manipulate God, but we're trying to manipulate ourselves to make our will match his will. Somebody shout, that's an accessory prayer. Y'all go with intercessory prayer. Lord, make that man love me. You don't love you. Lord, make that job keep me. You wouldn't work for yourself. That ain't intercessory prayer. That's witchcraft. Five things happen when we pray. Y'all ready? Yeah. Write these five things down. We're done. Prayer internalizes the burden. Prayer internalizes the burden. It deepens our ownership of the burden and our partnership with God. That's number one. Prayer internalizes the burden. It deepens our ownership with, of the burden. Meaning, we, when you're true praying, when you're really praying for real, you have to take ownership of what you're praying about. Yeah. Right. If you're sick, in prayer, tell God that you're sick. Y'all yeah. here with me? Yeah. Don't be saying, God, I ain't claiming that illness. Yes, you are. Claim it so that he can fix it. Yeah. He's Jehovah Rophi after all. Right. All right? Number two, prayer forces us to wait. A part of prayer is always waiting for God. God has three answers to prayer. Yes, no, and wait. There is tension between boldness and waiting on God's will. That tension is resolved by being persistent, yet accepting God's answer when it finally comes. Here's your issue. You're still praying about something God's already answered. Pastor, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, okay. Hey, right, come here, come here. Lord, if this job is not for me, send me an answer. First day of work, you got four flat tires. You get all four of those flat tires changed, then, you go, you, then your battery go dead. You get your battery changed, drive to work, you're at the wrong building. You finally find where the building should be, and that building catches on fire. And then you're sitting there in the parking lot saying, Father, I come against these spirits. These spirits are just trying to cancel me from my job, but I come against it. God said, happy dummy, I'm trying to tell you that this is not the job for you. Lord, send me a man. I want a tall dog. He come out short, fat, and white. And you still say, well, oh, Lord, I'm going to still give him my number. His wife answers the phone. And you call her Jezebel. Somebody shout, that is the answer. That is not in my notes, y'all. I'm just extra. Prayer forces us to wait. Some of y'all be asking me, you ain't worth 15 cents. <laughs> okay. All right, number three. Come back. It's Cinco de Mayo, y'all. Santo, Santo, Santo. Prayer opens, number three. 
Prayer opens our spiritual eyes. It enables us to get in touch with what God is doing. Watch this. And how God is doing. Here's where we mess up, guys. We date message and we marry methods. When God wants us to marry the message and date the method, we get stuck doing it one way that even our prayer time becomes mundane and stale because we tell God the same thing. Go with me, go with me, go with me. You pray every morning at 5 o'clock. You set your alarm. You do whatever you're going to do. And you go into traditional prayer as a routine versus a relationship. And now you're in prayer and you tell God the same thing every day. And you never give him a chance to answer you. And we call that devotion. When it's not devotion, it's repetition. I want, I want y'all to do me a favor tonight. Do me a favor. When you pray, wait for God to answer. Because guess what? God may change your prayer time from 5 to 6. He may change it from 5 to 4. My nephew said, I'm sorry, not my nephew. Um, What's the boy play that piano over there? Rodney. Rodney told me, he said, Pastor, every morning for the last week, my dog starts barking like crazy at 3 in the morning. I said, did you shock him? Did, I mean, did you give him a melatonin? I don't, I don't have a dog. I'm sorry. The thoughts and opinions expressed by my last statement does not reflect those of Without Walls in National Church. Um, he says, I don't, this dog don't normally bark. He just starts barking at three until I get up. I say, maybe the dog is not barking. Maybe the dog is sounding an alarm that it's time for you to do something different. Oh my God, oh my God. When your spirit man wake up at three in the morning, that's not those nachos you had the night before. That's God telling you to get up because I want to be, oh my God, oh my God. Some of y'all don't like to be waking up. That's why the enemy wins in your life because he has control of your sleep. But when you have a real God relationship, God will wake you up at three, put you back to sleep right on time, and you'll wake up at seven like you had a full night. Anybody know what I'm talking about? When you have that real relationship, He'll change your schedule. How many of y'all is willing for God to change your schedule? How many of y'all have said, God, if you want to wake me up back too, wake me up, man. If you want my attention, I want you to know I'm not just in love with you at 9 o'clock on Sunday. I'm not just in love with you at 7 o'clock on Thursday or 11 o'clock at Sunday or 2.15 on Sunday. But I have a relationship with you that whatever you want, I'm available. If you want to talk to me at 3, wake me up, God. If you want to talk to me at 6, wake me up. My storage is empty and only you can feel me. You got to be sensitive, church. People ask me all the time, Brown, how are you so prophetically accurate? I'm not. I have no clue what I'm saying and what I'm seeing. But if I tell you a duck can pull a truck, hook them up. If I tell you that there's a TV in your backyard, and you go in your backyard and there's not a TV? Call the police. Somebody stole your TV. It's because I have a relationship with Christ. Sometimes God will stop me in the middle of the week when I got a gazillion things going on and say, shut down your phone. Shut down your internet. Shut down your computer. Go back home and get on your face because Father has need of you. Y'all know how we've been building this church? We've been building this church through prayer and through fasting. Come on. Do y'all know how I even got here minding my own business at 1240 North Ohio in Lakeland, Florida, doing what I was doing for 16 years? That was some people on Monday nights that was praying. That was some people on Sundays that was praying. That was some people on Saturdays that was praying. Said, Lord, send a revival. Lord, send a revival. Lord, send a revival. And God went and grabbed me and grabbed 
JD and brought us to a place called destiny. Somebody shout, we got to be spiritual. Number four and five, I'm done. It aligns our heart with God's heart. It aligns our heart with God's heart. Adjustment, alignment, set in our thoughts, emotions, and our actions. God does nothing. He does nothing like you think he should. God gets on your nerves if you are an analytical type A. Because he don't follow SOPs, J.D. He do not do things the way you think he should do it. God does stuff like this. Lord, bless me to get more money. The next day you lose your job. Because Deuteronomy says it like this. He gave you power to get wealth, not your job. Your salary is them giving you a drug to forget your dreams. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But you got to know that when God shuts the door, he opens up a window. Oh, my God. Somebody in here needs to know the way God is moving in your life, it don't make sense, but it's going to make sense. Ooh, you just have to ask God through prayer, Lord, help me to adjust to make the adjustment. Some of y'all won't move. That's why God won't move. He can't move until you adjust. Watch this. J.D., get up and move over left one. The other left. The other left. Yeah, the other left. If, if Leah don't move, if Leah don't move, J.D. can't sit. Unless, wait, hold on a second. But, if everybody don't move, somebody's going to get sat on, or trumpet on, or pushed on. And guess what? When J.D. moved, he forced Leah to move. Leah forced Diana to move. Diana forced him off his chair. And sometimes God says, it wasn't you. You didn't fall. It was just a shift. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It was just a shift going on. Somebody shout, a shift. Number five, I'm done. Prayer enables us to move forward. Prayer, real prayer, enables us to move forward. Prayer engages God, and then enables God's people to enlarge his kingdom. Jesus says, without me, you can do nothing. Once we pray, we're ready to do anything. Until we've prayed, well, we can't do anything else left but pray. So this is how I tell you. You work like it's all on you, and you pray like it's all on God. And once God meets your prayer, and he says, I got it from here, then it allows you to move forward. Some of us are stuck in the trauma of our situation that we prayed about. God's fixed the situation, but you won't move on from the trauma that you allegedly gave to him. That ain't he didn't answer your prayer. That's the fact you won't move on. You have a responsibility, ladies and gentlemen, after you give it to God, walk away. You can't peek through the window and watch God do surgery on what you ask him to fix. God's doing his job. Your job is to do what he told us to do. Forgetting those things which are behind and we're reaching for those things which are to come. We press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Yeah. I want to encourage y'all today who without walls, don't stop praying because I'm a witness. I don't know about some other people in this room. Maybe they can help me or not. I'm a witness that the effectual fervent prayers yeah. of the righteous, yeah. they avail much. Can I ask a question in this room? Anybody have a real prayer life with God? Yeah. 
And, and, and the next question I want to ask, have you seen the hand of God move? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Prayer works. Yeah. Prayer works. Yeah. That's a problem that J.D. was just dealing with. He was praying about it, talking to God about it, and me in the middle of the night. And God started working on his behalf here. Here. Yeah. While the issue was in a whole other state. Can I tell you, God has no geographical limitations. There's no statute of limitations for Jesus. Jesus can go in places that you cannot go in. Jesus can fix people that you can't fix. I know you think Ayanna has a problem, but she went off the air, but Jesus is still on the air, and he's still on the throne. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask the thing, according to the power that's in us. Do y'all believe that today? How many of y'all going to trust God? How many of y'all going to pray a little bit harder? How many of you going to say, God, this is my life. This is your life. I'm giving it to you. Do what you want to do with it. How many of you are going to pray a little bit more tonight than you did on last night? Come on, let the Redeemer of the Lord say, hey, God, I'm not in this thing part-time. I want a full-time prayer life. Yeah. We're standing all over this auditorium. Yeah. You know, it was them Grams, Billy Graham and Sister Graham. I think it was last year, I had a chance to go to his, um, was that last year or the year before this? I think it was last year. I had a chance to go to North Carolina to where his um, home was. And I had a chance to go where Billy Graham actually slept. His room, his little, little small little three bedroom, two bath cottage. It was just very simple, very simple. Got a chance to go to the garden where he prayed, and even went to the place where he and his wife is laying at rest. Billy Graham was an anointed man of God. Billy Graham allowed his life to be an example wherein millions of souls were saved because of his decision to say yes. But Billy Graham's secret recipe was not his, his tall demeanor or his bass voice. But there was a little lady that would get his schedule and she would rent a room every week before he got to his city or his state and she would labor in prayer. She would lay out and intercede for that city. And she would open up doors and open up windows and unlock portals that Dr. Graham can do what he does. A lot of people don't know the foundation don't happen here on the pulpit. It don't happen with sermon writers and creative team. But it happens when hearts and minds of believers are turned towards God in prayer. Prayer makes a difference. Prayer makes the difference. All week, we now own a daycare. And all week, all, this has been the most, I got some employees in here. This has been the most, such a, the most stressful week of our lives. But every morning, the Lord been telling me, wake up, pray for every child, yeah. pray for every parent, yeah. pray for every director, right. pray for every teacher. Amen. And I've been praying, I'm watching God change things. And I don't, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to sneak and lay hands on every child that walks. I'm, I'm going to sneak and lay hands. It ain't in the curriculum, but it's in our hands. Oh, God. And I believe God's going to raise up millionaires and teachers and prophets and evangelists and pastors. Come on. Because when you have an environment of prayer. Ooh, leave that alone, bro. Leave that alone. Leave that alone. I want y'all to do me a favor. If you have a problem that you can't fix, turn it over to the one who can. He'll do so much more with your life than you can do with it. Can we pray together, guys? Father, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you are to us. Father, you're so many things at the same time. Sometimes you're Jehovah Shalom and Jehovah Jireh. Sometimes you're Jehovah Nisi and Jehovah Ropa. It's because of you that we live, we move, we even have our very being. Yeah. We thank you, God, for the ability to come boldly before the throne of grace. Yeah. 
And Father, we will always do as you told us to do in the book of Colossians. We will continue in prayer. We will watch and we will be thankful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to do this before we receive our offer. There's somebody in this room or somebody that's watching us that do not know Jesus in the part of your sin. I want to give you an opportunity to get to know this Jesus. I'm telling y'all, I know some pastors are preaching damnation. And, oh my God, gas is four dollars. The mark of the beast is coming. Guys, listen, that's not where we live. We don't live in a damnation city. We don't live in a damnable country. If you don't like our country, I can recommend 120 other countries that you're more than welcome to go to. There's no weight in this of people trying to leave America. Come on. We live in an amazing country because we still are under God. And as long as God's hands is on this country, there's nothing that can happen except God allows it. Amen. Get off my country, the United States of America. God bless the USA. Amen. And so I want to tell y'all this. We're going through a transition. Every country goes through. Every city goes through. Every church goes through. But one thing that has been consistent is the God that founded this country is going to be the God that finishes this country. I love our country. I love. Anybody besides me love the United States? I don't care who's in the White House. God is in the White House, and he's going to continue to see us through. Get all that worry away from you. The Bible said, be anxious for nothing, but in all things, make your prayer, make your supplication made known. And the peace of God will surpass all understanding and will guard your heart and will guard it. Oh, if you don't know this Jesus, if y'all don't know Jesus, don't get to know church. Get to know Christ. Get to know this Jesus. He'll give you a peace that surpasses all your understanding. Number two, if you don't have a church community, you don't have a family. We're not perfect. We are family. Yeah. We hug like family. God knows we eat like family. We fall out like family. We get back together again. That's what makes us family. Anybody got crazy family members? Yeah, that's a part of being a family. You know, you, know, you choose your friends, but God chooses your family. And I believe God has chosen an amazing family called Without Walls International Church. And if you need community, even if you don't believe, we want to give you a place to belong. And we will help nurture you to be better than you were in other times of your life. Amen? If you want to do any of those two things, know God. You can text WWIC to 55498. 55498. Amen? Hey, man, how many of y'all love God in this room? Yeah. Holiday. I want to give y'all a chance. I want to give y'all an opportunity um, to give tonight. Hey, guys, listen. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you for giving. I want y'all to continue to sow. Continue to sow. I believe God's doing some amazing things at our church. And we got to give all the way until we get to the end. I want everybody, I don't tell you what to give. But if you want to meet me at a $50 amount tonight, I want you to um, to meet us there tonight. I'm, a, I'm a, I want to sow 500 tonight. I don't know why that's been in my belly, and it's annoying me because that's not what I was planning on giving. I was I was planning on giving 50 dollars, but the Lord just told me to give 500. Um, how many of y'all just know how to trust God in the little things? Yeah. I don't know what that's for. Where my wallet? Can you bring my wallet? <laughs> God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on my God, or he won't give up on you.
Sunday. 